Chapter 15 Holly and I sat facing one another on twin loungers. Lya sat at a console between our feet. The suit sat propped at the other. Feeding circuits sprouted everywhere, linking the suit to a couple of other consoles which were keyed through a massive coil tape. Lya's board and us. Today was the day. A couple of things, began Holly, all businesslike. Firstly, the raw data. He reached over behind him and keyed something. A small screen lit up with light green letters against a dark green background. Name, Felix G. Age, 26. Current assignment and rank, warrior scout aboard the starship Terra in deep elliptical around A9. A9. A distant bell rang somewhere. Something I'd seen on the vid? Lia helped me out with. Banshee. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Ollie cleared his throat. More. This takes place, or rather, took place, almost exactly four standard years ago. Earth date, July 4th, 2077. That did ring a bell. Holly noticed my expression and nodded. Yes, this is the Independence Day drop, the very first invasion of ant soil. Quite literally, mankind's first step into the ant war. Holly continued in that efficient way he had, briefly recapping the events surrounding that day. It was hardly necessary. True, I had gone to some trouble in past years to avoid having news of that insanity intruding into my life. But I knew about that day. I remembered it clearly. Remembered sitting fixated before the vid like probably every other human in the known worlds. There had been something so spectacular about the events of those first weeks. About the idea of it. Interstellar war. Ants eight feet tall. Of course, it was madness. But in a race where most children grew up playing war, breathtaking fun. It was a good two or three months before I stopped beginning each day by tuning in news of the ant war. And it wasn't until the end of that first year, that horrible first year, which saw over two million people wasted, that I turned away, refusing to even listen to ant war conversation. That had been four years ago. The ant war still raged. I snapped back just in time to hear Holly's historical wind-up. He ended with a short explanation about why we, about why they, fleet, had been unable to guide missiles in the banshee atmosphere of poison and inscrutable magnetic fields. It was stuff I knew, along with the fact that it, Operation Knuckle, the part involving our scout, was considered a brilliant military victory. Next came a brief recap of stuff I had missed in the few minutes Holly had already played from the record. Then he gave me the same pre-drop briefing Felix had received, word for word. When he finally saw my puzzled expression over his perfect recall, he merely shrugged his shoulders and said, You'll understand in a minute. I clamped down hard on a sudden impulse to shudder. Now, said Holly, how do I know all this? The name, G. Felix, I got from fleet records using his fleet ID number. The number itself I got by reading it off the inside of his helmet. It's inscribed right between his twin hollows. You'll see it. That scared me. I'll be able to see through his eyes? I demanded, appalled. Not at first, said Holly quickly. Never, really. He looked uncomfortable. His eyes stared past me at something within. He frowned, resumed. The data is neither recorded nor delivered that way. It's not even vaguely photographic, Jack, but after a few minutes, I can't explain exactly. He shrugged. You'll see. I would see through the eyes or whatever of a dead man. This time, I did shudder. 
Lia shifted forward in her chair, moving quickly on. There are a couple of anomalies. First, in the fleet records. According to them, Chief Felix wasn't even there at the time of this battle. Wasn't even moved to the forward zone until well over three months later. I didn't get it. I said so. Lia smiled. Frankly, neither do we. Confirmation codes didn't exactly clear it up. They did. Uh, fleet center on Militar, I mean. Come back with something about incomplete records on G. Felix and some sort of trouble with them. But that wasn't until months later, as near as we can determine. There was reference to a security code needed for further data. A rather high code, in fact. Too high? I asked. Holly smiled indulgently. No, I have it, but I decided not to use it. He looked at the floor, smiled nervously. Why bother if I was about to get the truth for myself? Hmm. Why indeed, Holly? Unless you didn't really want to know. Or maybe he didn't want to call attention to himself by invoking a high security clearance. Or, unless he had no faith in getting the truth from Fleet at all. No faith, Holly had said that morning. He had no faith. <laughs> I searched his uneasily averted gaze. Was he, super patriot fleet scientist, beginning to have doubts? Something was making him all a flutter. I shuddered again. That something would be plain soon enough. What's the other anomaly? I wanted to know. Lia shifted in her seat again. I really hated it when she did that. Well, I'm not entirely certain there is one. It's just that... She gestured at the coil reel recorder beside her board. I was able to get a coil of Holly's experience. Some of it, anyway. His vital signs, respiration, heart rate, acid levels, were recorded along with Felix's. Using what I knew about Holly's history, I was able to filter the two apart. So we know how Felix's body was reacting as well. Nothing unusual there. But... She hesitated. We also have both sets of Alpha Series brain tracks. She hesitated again. Felix's were a little odd. How? I asked bluntly, not bothering to hide my rapidly growing suspicions. Well, the Alpha resembles, on first glance, classic textbook symptoms of schizophrenia. Great, I snarled angrily. We're going into the brain of a raving ma- Lia held up a hand. On first glance, I said. The pattern, after careful study, misses at several key points. Then he's not mad, I prompted. Or getting there? She looked very uncomfortable, but she managed a little something definite in her tone. I don't think he is. She looked at me, her face impassive. I can't be sure, but I don't think so. Then why tell me, goddammit? She looked genuinely surprised. I thought you wanted to know everything. Well, I don't, I snapped. Then, to soften it, I tried a small grin. It seemed to help. She relaxed somewhat. And then, abruptly, it was time. One last check to be sure Lya's monitoring systems were properly keyed in. Another check to see that our dead man switches, to jerk us out in an instant, were functioning. The helmets were lowered over our heads, over our eyes. My last glimpse was of the suit, sitting darkly beside us. It was an impulse I couldn't seem to resist. And then I went to hell. <laughs>